Hello friends, welcome to Expert Guidance. Today in this video, we'll be covering the topic Reversible Reactions and Equilibrium of Section 3 Physical Chemistry of Adexel IGCSE Chemistry. And this video will be covering the section 3.17 till 3.22. And in this video, we'll be looking over how do we define a reversible reaction, some examples of reversible reaction, what a dynamic equilibrium is, how the position of the equilibrium can be changed by altering the conditions, how catalyst affects the equilibrium and we'll be also discussing a small principle called Lee Shuttles principle which helps us in predicting the change in the direction of the equilibrium with the change in concentration, pressure, temperature and the use of catalyst. And I would recommend you to watch this video till the end because in the end we'll be looking over a few applied questions on changing and altering conditions and we'll also look over some very important key terms and definitions of this unit. So let's begin. Now let's start with the equilibrium topic. Now, what is an equilibrium? To define an equilibrium, we should first know what is a reversible reaction. Now, there are many reactions in chemistry which are reversible. Reversible means reaction that proceeds both directions, that is the forward and the reverse. For example, manufacture of ammonia by a Habis process. So, nitrogen plus hydrogen gives ammonia in the forward direction and in the reverse direction, the ammonia breaks up to give nitrogen and hydrogen. Now, how does reaction start? You can see at the start, the reactant's concentration decreases and the product concentration increases. As the reactant is decreasing with time, the product is increasing with time. Now, at this point, can you see the concentration of both the reactants and the product is same? Why? Because at this point, the rate of appearance of product and the rate of disappearance of reactants is the same. And this is known as equilibrium. Now, remember, do not write same in equilibrium. Equilibrium has a proper definition and you need to write exactly like this. Equilibrium is when the rate of forward reaction is equal to the rate of reverse reaction. Now, most of the students think that as the concentration doesn't change at equilibrium, the reaction stops at equilibrium. But this is not true. The equilibrium is dynamic. What is dynamic equilibrium? It means that the reaction does not stop at equilibrium. The reaction takes place with the same rate in both the direction. So overall, we see no change. And for the dynamic equilibrium to set up, it has to be a closed system. So nothing should leave or enter the system. And the rate of forward reaction should be equal to the rate of reverse reaction. Okay, so I hope the definition of equilibrium is clear to you. Now, why we are studying equilibrium so that we can alter equilibrium. And how we can alter equilibrium? By this Lee Shuttleist principle. Now, first of all, Remember the definition and always write it in the same way. When the system in equilibrium is subject to a change, the equilibrium is moved to a direction to counteract the change. Now, what does that mean? For example, you're doing a reaction and you are deliberately increasing any concentration. So the reaction will move into that direction where that particular concentration that you have increased can be decreased. Got it? Confusing. Okay, let's take an example. Just see this reaction. This is the ammonia manufactures where nitrogen and hydrogen gives ammonia. So in the forward direction, what is happening? That is to the right. Ammonia is being made and nitrogen and hydrogens are getting used up. In the reverse direction, what is happening? Ammonia is used up and nitrogen and hydrogen is made. Now, if you add nitrogen deliberately to this system, According to the Lee Shuttles principle, whatever you do, the reaction will do the opposite. So you have added nitrogen, the reaction will move to that side, which is using up the nitrogen. So what is that side? Right. So the equilibrium will shift towards the right by adding nitrogen. Similarly, when you add the hydrogen, again, the equilibrium will try to decrease hydrogen. So it will move to that side that will decrease hydrogen, which is the right side. I hope you are getting it now. Let's take ammonia. If you add ammonia, according to Lee Shuttles principle, what will the system do? It will try to decrease ammonia. Decrease ammonia means move to that side, which is using up ammonia. So the equilibrium will shift towards the left. On the other hand, if you remove ammonia deliberately, the system will require to move to that side, which will make up ammonia. 
So the equilibrium will shift towards right. So in Habe's process, nitrogen and hydrogen are continuously added and unreacted or recycled, and ammonia is removed as soon as it is formed, so that we always have the reaction shifted towards right and higher yield of ammonia. Okay, so remember this principle, and if you do the question exactly the way I'm telling, you will never ever make a mistake. So see what factor you're changing, and then what is the counter of that uh, factor, and which direction it is happening. Okay, let's take another example, pressure. Now for the pressure, there's a rule. More the gas molecules, more the pressure. Less the gas molecules, less the pressure. So in this side, more pressure is on to the left side because it has four moles of gases and less pressure is on the right side. So if you increase the pressure, what will the system do according to Lee Shuttler's? It will move the reaction to the less pressure side. And which is the less pressure side? To the right. On the other hand, if you decrease the pressure, the system will do the opposite. It will increase the pressure. So move the reaction to the more gas side, which is the left. So high pressure is required for the manufacture of ammonia. Okay, so I hope this is clear to you. Similarly, the temperature has the same effect, but for the temperature, you need to remember a rule. If a forward reaction is exothermic, that is producing heat, then the reverse will be endothermic, that is taking in heat, and vice versa. An exothermic reaction is the one that produces heat, endothermic takes in heat. How will you come to know whether a reaction is exothermic or endothermic? You look at the delta H sign. If the delta H is negative, the forward reaction is exothermic. And if it is positive, it is endothermic. So in this equation, the forward reaction is producing heat. So if you increase the temperature, the reaction will move to the side that will decrease the temperature. That is to the endothermic side, which is the left. And decrease in temperature will shift the react to the more heat side, which is to the right. Okay. So as always, our next step, as I always, always insist, do check your specification. Make sure whatever thing is there in your specification is crystal clear to you. And do exam questions on this topic, which can be found on my website. Now, please do not forget to subscribe to my channel and click on the bell icon, which is just to the right, so that you can get notified as soon as I put a new video. If you have any doubts in any of this topic, Leave a comment below and I'll try to reply you as soon as possible. Or else you can come to my website where I'm available 24-7 on chat before your exam to answer all your queries. Okay, so I'll see you next in the next video. And if there's any specific topic you're finding hard and you want me to put a video on, then also leave a comment below and I'll make sure I'll have that up and running before your exam. So I'll see you next in the next video. Till then, happy revising.